today I'm hooking up with my good buddy Chris Lancaster. Chris is the uh, uh, the North Middle Tennessee agent for Whitetail Properties uh, and has access to some really cool properties. And so Chris has asked me to come and do a professional assessment of some of the ponds that are on one of the properties he has for sale. Let me tell you a little bit about Whitetail Properties. We are dedicated land specialists. We uh, focus on selling uh, hunting, recreational, timberland, farmland. I'm focused in Tennessee and I focus on typically properties 40 acres and above. And what I've been impressed with is not just the, the amount of fishing that's available, but how readily available, not just properties like you offer through Whitetail Properties, but the public land and the access to really great hunting opportunities, you know? Absolutely. It's interesting what you touched on there. I, I get a lot of out of town clients that come to buy property in Tennessee. And one of the, the number one things that they say is they cannot believe how friendly the people are here and, uh, and how they'll just come up to you, talk to you, and take interest in you. It's pretty, pretty neat. Oh, there we go. Oh, how? How do they get it in their mouth and not get hooked? How? I can barely take it out of the tackle box without hooking myself. And they can put it in their mouth and be on for a second and come off. I don't get it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just, I threw back into the, the grass and the trees and I'm just slowly taking my time, letting it hit the bottom and I'll reel it up, kind of reel it up the tree limb. What you want to do is raise it up till it touches get the swing out of it, drop it down about six inches, and then hop it up to the next limb. And then if you take your time and just do that kind of all the way through, even in the most tangled, nasty mess, you can work your lure out of a tree. It's when you snatch it and give it that quick wrap while it's still swinging that you get hung up. All of us get impatient and rush it, but by and large, if you take your time and just kind of raise it up, let the line fall down, hop it up over the tree limb, you can come through the thickest stuff without ever getting hung up. Oh, shoot. Can you reach that? <laughs> We've got some uh, willow trees up here against the bank and much like what we were talking about in our short segment yesterday before we got blown off with the storms is we've got the wind blowing the surface water that's warmed over to this bank so in theory you know and intuitively with the sun coming up in the east and that west bank over there being the one that gets the sun first you'd think that's where the fish would be but we fished over there just to prove that theory and didn't catch a fish Hans comes over here stakes out and his second cast up into this brush that's on the side that the warmer water is getting blown to and was getting blown to all night long is, uh, is where the fish were at. And so we're gonna work this bank and see if we can find some cover, some structural changes and find where the fish are relating. But this, uh, this east side, even though it's not the side getting the most sun right out of the gate is getting that warmer water blown over to it. And those fish are right there. So picking them apart. Is that your personal best? That's my personal best. Personal best. He says it's five pounds on the nose. Of course, if I was holding it, everybody would say, that fish ain't but about a pound, pound and a half. So these dark colored baits really contrast well in this muddy water. And a lot of people would look at this body of water when we first got here and said, uh, 
that ain't even worth fishing. Looks like a mud hole. And here we are in 10 minutes. <laughs> Got two bass over five pounds. This one's easily over five and just a total stud um, on that dark bait, that crawfish pattern. Chunky fish. And the ticket was to let it set. I'm pretty much dead sticking the bait, just barely moving it with the rod to kick up some, some bottom silt and then letting it sit there. And this, the fish are flat smashing it. I'm waiting for that hog to come back in that corner that I hooked before. As soon as I hooked him, Chad, he took me straight out in the deep. He just took off. Let's see if this is a fish because hook sets are free. Oh yeah, there it is. Nah, little guy. I still am amazed by the aggressiveness of something that little. I mean, the bait's half its size and it swam up and just tried to eat it. So the thing that we've been having consistent success with over the course of this trip is the old trusty Texas rig. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind that can take your Texas rig from effective to more effective, and there's a few things that you can do to the Texas rig to make fishing it less frustrating. Let's take a closer look at the trusty old Texas rig. So the Texas rig is one of the most versatile ways to rig a soft plastic, and one of the most popular. Uh, Texas rig basically consists of your line, uh, weight, either free floating or pegged, uh, and some type of hook. So I'm gonna use a little bit larger hook than I normally would for a lizard, and I'm gonna show you a couple things that you need to keep in mind when rigging a Texas rig. First and foremost, you wanna make sure that your hook point goes in um, clean, and you wanna make sure it goes in even. So I'm gonna use a lizard, because a lizard is the one that most people kink up and, uh, and have a hard time rigging. So you wanna come in straight and grab the head of the plastic and bring it in, and you wanna stop right about the time that the transition or the curve of the hook. Ideally, what you wanna do is you wanna have about the distance from the curve in the shank to the knot inside the plastic, and I'll show you the reason for that in just a second. So make a sharp entry out of the plastic, wet your hook so that the plastic slides on there nice and easy and it doesn't tear the plastic up in the process. As you push it up, you wanna twist it and slide it up just above. Now, you want the hook to come out and you want it to be just above the knot. And the reason for that is you want your weight to come down and when it impacts your plastic, you don't want your knot to be exposed. If your knot's exposed, that weight banging against it all day long can cause friction and premature failure of your knots. The other thing that you don't wanna do is you don't wanna to have too much plastic past the tip of the hook, because if you do, when the weight hits it, it'll kink it up or push it down off of the hook shank. So you wanna have that hook point in there just enough to barely cover the knot, slide it forward, it's nice and clean, and then when, you're, when your weight comes down and hits it, it sits on there perfect. There's just enough plastic to cushion it, but not enough that when it hits it, it's gonna push it off of the hook shank. And then here's a quick trick to make sure that you get the hook in right. First and foremost, if it went in the top correctly, when you line it up with the body, it's gonna sit there straight, just like it is now. So grab the body and pinch it just where the hook shank wants to go through. Now bring the hook point up, and what you wanna do is you wanna get it right at the spot that you eyeballed. You want to come through at a 90 degree angle. If you come through at an angle, it's gonna kink the plastic. And I'm gonna do it both ways to show you. If you come through at a 90 and roll it, then when you level that out, you see you've got no bow in the belly, you push up on it, you push it forward and just text pose that hook and you've got a nice clean profile. Let me show you a big mistake that's made when rigging a soft plastic Texas rig. Again, not getting the right spot, grab it back a little further, I'm gonna show you how that works. Come in here and then go in at an angle like this instead of going through vertical and then you've got, when you go to kink it, you get an S in the body. That's gonna cause the worm to spin, that's gonna cause it to kink, and it's gonna cause it to you know, search. It's not gonna give it a clean profile in the water. Now, there are times when you're wanting to tweak your plastics and give them a little more action, make them search a little bit, but when you're trying to rig it clean, the idea is to lay the hook on there naturally, just like that, grab it right at the spot where the hook needs to go through, and you wanna come through at a perfectly 90 degree angle, and you wanna come through dead center. I like to squeeze the plastic as I'm going through. It helps me guide it through there nice and easy. When it comes out, you'll get a perfectly centered profile. Then you just take that, slide it up, push it forward, 
and text pose it so that that doesn't catch on grass. But when the, gra when the bass grabs it, it pops out for an easy hook set. So again, the Texas rig is one of the most versatile styles out there. We'll get into why you should and shouldn't peg it at a later date, but I wanted to cover the basics of the Texas rig and why this is one of the most versatile setups out there. You can use this with lizards, worms, creature baits, pretty much any soft plastic out there. The Texas rig, if it isn't part of your arsenal, it should be. Learn to tie it right and you'll catch more fish.